The next resource record type I'd like to talk about is the SRV resource record type. The SRV resource record type is basically a service location record. What it does is it points to the location of a key network resource on the network. To have a service resource record or an SRV record, it needs to be part of the Active Directory Domain Services Domain Controller. The SRV records for a domain controller are created as part of the process of promoting a regular server up to a domain controller. Service resource records are required for other types of services besides domain controllers. Kerberos is an example of a service that requires an SRV record. LDAP is another example of a service requiring SRV records. Generally, the SRV records are created in the underscore msdcs dot domain name zone. The Kerberos record has a protocol of TCP and it has a port number of 88. The LDAP SRV record is similar to the Kerberos record, except that it uses port 389 instead of port 88. One thing to keep in mind about the LDAP records is that you really shouldn't modify them except in very rare cases. One place where it may be necessary to modify an LDAP record is to recreate it in case of a recovery from some kind of unplanned event. You may also need to modify an LDAP record to adjust weight and priority of individual services or individual servers to provide a load balancing. There are other services that can also use the SRV records. Typically, SRV records are created when a DNS server is created or part of the installation of a DNS server. It is also possible to manually create an SRV record, but this is only done rarely. In general, if an SRV record is needed, it will be created in the process of installing whatever role or service that you're trying to install. Microsoft Exchange will also use SRV records. The SRV record for Microsoft Exchange allows Outlook and other clients to automatically discover the Exchange server. Earlier, I said that this is very seldom necessary to manually create an SRV record, but for purposes of this course here, I'll go ahead and demonstrate the process of creating an SRV record so that you can see what an SRV record looks like. The place to create an SRV record is in the DNS manager. So let's come over here to our landon.com hotel zone and then right click it. And now you'll notice we don't actually have an SRV record type that we can create. We do, however, have other new records option. Let's go ahead and click that. And this brings up the resource record type dialog box. You'll notice there are a large number of possible resource records we can create here. Some of these resource records we've talked about, others we haven't. Some we'll talk about later and some we won't be talking about at all in this course. But you can still see all the different types of resource records that are available. For our purposes, the resource record we're looking for is the service location or SRV record type. So click on that and then click create record. And now we need to determine the type of service that we want to create this record for. Now we can't just put any service in here. We need to select from the services that are available. So we come over here and we drop down this menu and we see that we have a finger service, FTP, HTTP, Kerberos, LDAP, MSDCS, NNTP, Telnet, and Whois. We talked about the Kerberos service earlier, so let's go ahead and create a Kerberos service record. We also have an option of choosing a protocol. Now, in the case of Kerberos, TCP is what we should use, though we do have the option of UDP as well. So let's go ahead and use TCP. We'll just leave the default priority and weight in here at zero. And then you'll notice that the port ID for this or the port number for this is 88. Now we need to tell it which host is offering this particular service. In this case, we're going to tell it that the domain controller is the host that's offering this. We can either do this by using the domain controller's name, which is this long win name up here, or we can simply put in the IP address. I'm going to use the IP address because it's just the easier one to type. Once we've told it 
what server or host is offering the service, we can then click OK. And now we can click Done. Now if we come up here under TCP, you'll notice there's now a Kerberos record that has the IP address that we just created. This is CRV record that we just created right here.